So let's talk home inspections. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's talk about why you need one, what gets inspected, and when you should get a home inspection for your property. So before I dive into the home inspection tips, I just wanted to say hi, and I am happy to be back. I needed to take a couple months off. In 10 years, I have created hundreds and hundreds of videos, and we're now up to 3.4 million views. We have over 17,000 subscribers and the comments from you guys keep coming in and it's awesome. I'm happy to answer questions, but I needed to take care of myself and the family. My in-laws sold their house of 51 years and moved into a retirement home. My son got engaged and moved into an apartment. I got kids off to college and I made some time for my husband and I to go away on vacation. So I'm back. We've got a ton of great new content coming. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. And if you have an idea about content or something that you would like to learn about, please make sure you pop over to the website, diyhipchicks.com, and let me know in the contact form what you would like to learn about. There are three typical times where you will get a home inspection, and that is when you are buying a home, selling the home, or perhaps you are staying in the home and you just want to identify what issues might be coming down the line so you can budget. So let's dive a little deeper into that. If you are buying a home, I believe you should absolutely get a home inspection. In the housing boom after COVID, we saw a lot of people that were skipping getting their home inspections done and buying a home on trust and luck. Well, there have been a ton of lawsuits and a lot of unhappy home buyers because there were significant issues that added up to lots of money that they didn't anticipate and they didn't have a um, negotiating um, stance because they didn't get an inspection done. So it really is something that you need to do. Now, if you are selling that home, you may want to get an inspection done before you go to list that house on the market because this way you have a perspective that is benefiting your self-interest in terms of what needs to be done. And if you are staying, perhaps you plan on taking out a um, home equity loan. You know, you're going to pay for college, you're going to pay for something else. And you're wondering, God, is my roof going to last? How many more years do I have? Do I have any other major issues that I need addressed in my home if I'm going to be here another 20 years? Well, get a home inspection for a few hundred dollars and then you can plan your budget on the money that you're borrowing so that you can take care of things for the long haul. So the next question is, who does the home inspection? Who am I hiring? Well, you can hire a private home inspection company and they will work on your behalf and look out for your best interests in that property. Now, there are times that a home inspection is done by a township or a municipality when you go to sell a property. And in that case, that home inspector is looking out for the safety and well-being of the next buyer and making sure that that home is up to code to maintain uh, the value and safety for that piece of land and the home on it. So what are the things that are looked at in a home inspection? Well, one of the big things is the electrical system. So do you have a circuit breaker box that is antiquated? Do you still have fuses? Do you have um, non-grounded outlets throughout your house? Or do you have th GFIs that aren't tripping? All of those things get looked at and you'd be shocked pun intended, by how many other little things may be coming up on a home inspection, right down to um, the style of boxes that are used in the wall and how many GFIs you have in a particular room. The next thing is the plumbing system. They're going to be looking at the hot water heater. They're going to be looking at the sump pumps. They're going to look for um, uh, overflow valves, all of these types of things to make sure that the home does not create a flood risk or a um, toxin hazard by having the gases vented poorly back into your home. The next big one is the roof. They want to make sure that the roof is intact, that you're not set up for leaks, that you're not going to have ice dams, and this way you can move into that property or sell that property and using that good roof as a uh, bargaining tool for getting the proper value for that house. And of course, 
we're going to look at the structure of the property. Are there any signs of cracks, of shifting? Is the basement foundation solid? They go up in the eaves in the attic and they look for any cracks or mold or rot. All of these things matter so that you are getting a property that is safe and sound for your family. Now there may be some things that will surprise you that come up on a home inspection. It could be something like a stove anti-tip kit. When we sold my in-laws house, this was something. We had to make sure that we put an anchor on the stove so no kid could open the oven, sit on the door, and flip it. This is a real hazard that can happen, and it was a $20 repair. There's also issue that came up of the bathroom vent fan was vented to the attic and not to the outside. Well, it had been 50 years and it had been that way, but it needed to be brought up to code. And that was a couple hundred dollar repair. When you get a home inspection, it's going to show you what are the priority issues. There will be things that are listed as safety, priority safety, things that are recommended, and then things that are maintenance. So you can then negotiate as the buyer or the seller as to which of these things you are willing to make accommodations for, either by doing yourself when you sell or by getting money back as the buyer that you can have repaired later. There are a few very special things that come up on inspections. One is the radon. The radon test is done separately and you will get a separate report and that is for homes that have sump pumps and basements. There is um, an assessment of whether or not there is asbestos in the house and that could be based on old floor tiles in particular way back from early 80s and, and older homes. And then there is the issue of lead. So based on the age of the home, there could be lead in the paint or in the plumbing systems. So these are things that would also be flagged and itemized on your report. So how much does a home inspection cost? Well, it's typically based on the square footage of the home. And in the Philadelphia area, a 3,000 square foot home might go anywhere from say, you know, 350 to $600 based on, um, how many levels and bathrooms and things like that. So you want to call ahead. You want to be very concrete. You want to be able to answer those questions over the phone. So you understand ahead of time what this small investment will be to make sure that your home is up to snuff. So the key takeaway on this little summary of inspections is to make sure that you find someone that you are comfortable with. You want an inspector that typically comes from word of mouth or is well recommended, but you want someone that you feel is willing to really stand behind you, to walk you through that property and explain things, to teach you why X, Y, or Z is an issue so that you can make the accommodations either before you sell or after you have bought. But this way you understand what the maintenance needs are down the road and what other potential concerns might happen down the road if you decide to not address something at the time of the inspection. And while we're talking about maintenance, in a house, don't forget to subscribe because one of the things that I do is talk about maintenance, talk about troubleshooting and small, easy repairs. My whole goal is to save you money, stress, and time. So make sure you subscribe.